Please put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. Sorry, couldn't resist. The Shashika really does look like Ed 209 from the original Robocop. This is the Yashika 230AF. It was made from 1987 to 1981. It was the Kyocera era of the Yashika brand. They did a total of five cameras and 13 lenses in the autofocus mount um, until 1984 when Kyocera gave up on autofocus SLRs. They didn't have any of the contacts lenses like the Yashica manual focus SLRs or who knows, maybe this line would have succeeded. It has a screw drive for the autofocus like uh, the old uh, Nikons or like the uh, Contax G uh, autofocus range finders. It has a vertically traveling metal shutter goes from one two thousandth of a second to sixteen seconds plus bulb. Uh, the controls are a little bit similar to the Minolta 7000. You hold which function you want and then you use this little rocker here to step through the different values. Um, to start, this is your power switch. Lock is off. And then AEL uh, for auto exposure lock, I guess. Really all that does is it wakes up and uses spot metering instead of center weighted. And then on is just normal on. This little tiny button in the front shoulder here is if you have the remote. Sadly, I don't have that for this camera because there's one feature where I can really use it that's cool, but I haven't really got a chance to play with it. And I'll get to that in a sec. Um, this other one is ISO. So you can defeat what it reads in the DX encoding. DX encoded film, it reads from 25 to 5,000 ISO. And if you manually set it, overriding the DX or with an unmarked canister, it goes from ISO 6 to 6,400. Um, the drive, uh, it has single, which is your normal take shot, continuous, and I forgot what the uh, frames per second count is. I'll put a bit of text down below. Um, and then self timer, which is 10 seconds. The mode dial uh, switches through programmed auto exposure, shutter priority, aperture priority, and full manual. When you're in manual, let me switch it real quick. Program. manual. When you're in manual, the little slider changes the shutter speed and then you hold the focus lock button here and then it steps the lenses uh, through the lenses aperture settings. The exposure compensation has quite a bit of range. It's plus or minus four stops in third stop steps. So you can go 12 values up and down, well, 12 third stops. Um, the autofocus uh, switches between autofocus and continuous autofocus. And when you're in continuous, that's when you want your focus lock. And if you're tracking something moving, but then it's starting to move away or something and you need to capture the autofocus at that particular distance just hit that button and it'll lock it in. There's an interesting setting and this is the part where I really wish that I had the remote. It's called trap mode. You move this little switch down here that selects autofocus where the screw drive focuses or manual focus where you do it Set that into manual focus, and then press the AF button, and it toggles between manual focus and this strange kind of little diamond shape, and that's trap mode. So if you've autofocused and then switched to manual focus, or you manual focus at a specific distance, you got to hold the half press 
which is why I really want the remote. And then when something comes into the scene, into the frame, at the correct focus distance, the camera will fire. So that would be really cool for like a blind at a wildlife trail or something where you know something's going to come by in more or less a specific spot. You just set the camera up, use the remote or else you're sitting there with it, and then when something comes into the focus zone, boom, you get the shot. It's really kind of a cool feature. I wish you didn't have to have press, but anyway, it's, it's there if you need it. Uh, it uses the uh, 6 volt, the 2CR5, it only takes one of them, the 2CR5 is the battery model. That goes here inside the grip, and that also powers the built-in flash, which is really easy. You just give a little twist, the button pops off, and then it'll slide off the rails. And it will take other flashes, it has a nice intelligent hot shoe. When this or another compatible flash is attached, um, it automatically sets, let's see if I can get these rails lined up, it automatically sets the shutter to a 90th of a second and you get an indicator in the viewfinder uh, letting you know that the flash is charged up and ready to go. So I really enjoyed this uh, camera. This one has a problem. The mirror is hanging and it won't come completely back down. Sometimes it'll even hang on the back of the lens. It's one of those kind of, it slides and moves arrangements. But after I processed the, the test roll that I ran through this, some of them are only half exposed. The top half of the picture will be, you know, well exposed. And then the back part is black, the bottom part is black. So I think the mirror problem may be a symptom. It may not be finishing the shutter cycle to let the mirror come back down. Um, I'm hoping it's just some dirty rails or something, because this is a complex electronic camera, and I don't know how much work I'll be able to do to it. So I'll try and shoot another roll through it uh, if I can get it working more reliably. And I will see you then.